Okay, so this is the resistive load for the wind turbine that we have set up. When the wind turbine creates excess power or too much power for the system, the extra power is routed through here through two large resistors. These are gigantic resistors that you can see behind the cage, and it's actually very hot right now. Uh, we have about 20 mile per hour, maybe 18 to 20 mile per hour constant wind today. Uh, so this system right here is from the wind turbine. And right here we have a brake on, so I can turn the wind turbine on, so it's producing electricity, electricity coming from the turbines. Uh, in the middle, where it's not on either one, uh, basically that's just free spin, and then we have brake. Brake means it just completely shuts it off. And so when that happens, I'll read zero amps coming from the wind turbine because, being, uh, because there's a brake. Now if I just leave it free spin, it's not producing any electricity um, just because my system's floating right now I don't need the uh, excess capacity now this right here these two blue tubes um, have the three phase electricity coming from the two turbines remember my wind turbine has two uh, tur um, three phase um, um, generators on it so basically that comes in I get to control whether it breaks or it's on here and then right here, this turns the three-phase AC, alternating current, into DC, direct current, okay? So you can see right here, okay? And it changes it into DC, and this is a main shutoff panel right here. And again, it goes to where I can read how many amps are producing. So right now it's still, uh, but again, we're having uh, gusts of wind up to 18 to 20 miles per hour, and that goes into this uh, resistive load right here if it's uh, creating too much capacity. So when this green light is blinking, which is blinking periodically as you can see, it means it's a little bit less than what the wind turbine is designed to produce because it's producing nothing right now because there's no gusts of wind. We just had about five minutes ago a uh, 20 mile per hour gust of wind. So when that happens, when we produce any more than five amps from the wind turbine, here's the five mark, 10 mark, and 15. Today it actually reached the 15 uh, amp mark which is one of the first times I've seen it do that uh, but the green uh, green light will go solid when it goes beyond 10 amps so when it's maybe beyond halfway between 5 and 10 the red light will engage and what that means is the excess electricity will go into these resistors and you can actually feel the heat let me set that down but you can feel the heat and I don't want to touch anything and even this right here is hot and this is a solenoid 12 volt relay so that engages when there's too much capacity uh, too many watts going through uh, from the from the wind turbine so what happens is it reroutes the DC through the solenoid uh, relay and goes through the red cable right here to the resistive load. It's very, very hot right now. Um, but again, I have it in uh, free spin, so it won't be producing anything. Uh, my system's doing really well right now uh, 13 volts and the solar just by itself because the wind turbine's on free spin right now. Uh, the solar panel system's producing. Yeah, about 17, it looks like it's fluctuating a little bit, but about 17 amps. Um, it's heavy, heavy, uh, heavy clouds today, overcast. Um, so my battery system is doing pretty well right now. Um, actually, my midnight solar is telling me I'm floating, so I'm not really using any electricity. I don't really have a lot going in the system right now. But um, basically, it's doing pretty well because we're on solar right now. Now, one of the things uh, I wanted to create this video to show you is if you're doing your own wind turbine system is watch out and kind of research where your wind speeds are. Uh, this cord right here, or this cable, was the previous cable a few days ago. Uh, here in uh, Central Florida where we barely get wind gusts of 10 to 12 miles per hour on a very rare occasion. Um, so actually you can, I can hear the wind turbine outside, it's producing uh, quite a bit, it's, it's a whooshing whishing sound. But um, this cable is a replacement and it's still really hot, like I can feel it. This cable actually melted because it couldn't handle the capacity that was going to the resistive load. Um, going from the solenoid to the resistive load and you can actually see it just burnt just like that and just disconnected so what we had to do was get a higher gauge wire and a lot more of it um, just to carry that load there so that actually shows you that uh, that was kind of unexpected so this is this is about heavy uh, I believe that's one one or two gauge I'll have to double check but it's much much heavier gauge wire and uh, that is hopefully that will allow us to uh, 
a lot more DC energy to go through when the solenoid relay engages. Um, and as of now, again, we don't have any wind, but when we do, see it's reading, yeah, reading zero right now. But if we get too much, it'll cause that to either uh, melt um, like this did. But again, we have much longer cable, much heavier duty, so that shouldn't happen, and uh, we just have to monitor it. So these high wind speeds, completely unexpected. Uh, did not think that I would, uh, we would experience that, but just a, uh, a caution. Just want to watch out for that because that will, uh, that can occur with uh, high wind speeds.